My name's Joe, and today I want to talk about my custom Marvel Legends Bullseye figure. Now I think Hasbro may have this room bugged, because back in March or April, I finished this custom Bullseye figure, and then over the past weekend, Hasbro announced an official Bullseye figure in the upcoming Marvel Knights wave. So we already knew about the Netflix Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica Jones, and Elektra figures, but Hasbro recently revealed that the remaining figures for the wave were going to be Bullseye here, Blade the Vampire Hunter, and the Builder figure is going to be Man-Thing. So this situation's come up a few times in the past, where I work on a custom figure to add to my collection, only to find out soon after that some company is releasing an official version. Sometimes my custom looks better, and sometimes my custom looks like shit compared to the official version. So right now I'm pretty happy with my custom bullseye, but I'll let you be the judge whether or not Hasbro makes my custom figure obsolete. Today's beer selection is very special. It is an excellent coffee stout made by a good friend of mine at Six Six Brewers in collaboration with Paradox Coffee in St. Joseph, Missouri. And I came up with the name. Alright, here we go. Alright, here's a 360 degree look at my custom Marvel Legends Bullseye figure. He was cobbled together using parts from the original Toy Biz Bullseye figure, as well as parts from the more recent Hasbro Marvel Legends Grim Reaper and Nick Fury. Alright, so I was pretty fortunate to find a couple of Grim Reaper figures on clearance for $5 each. I decided to pick them up for custom fodder, and I used one of the heads for this custom Bullseye figure. I really like the eyes and the big wide smile there. It's really crazy looking. I think that suits Bullseye really, really well. The Grim Reaper is a larger figure than this uh, Bucky Cap figure. And I can see someone being critical that the head is out of proportion for this body, like it's too big. But I tend to think of it as Bullseye wearing a helmet, like Captain America kind of, rather than wearing a thin piece of material over his head. So basically all I did was cut the fins off the side of the Grim Reaper head, sanded them down a little bit, I completely repainted the head, and fortunately I didn't have to modify the neck at all, or the socket. The uh, head doesn't fit on there super snugly, it doesn't snap into place, but it doesn't fall off either. And it affords pretty good range of motion. He's got good up and down, side to side, and you can tilt the head back and forth, for attitude. This collar piece is one of the only parts from the original Toy Biz Bullseye that I kept. Uh, unfortunately it had really really sloppy paint so I tore it off Bullseye, I glued it onto this Bucky Cat body and completely repainted it and tried to make it a little bit cleaner. Alright so from the neck down to the calves here this is the Nick Fury slash shield agent figure and another reuse of the Bucky Cat mold. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. I have a lot of figures based on this mold and even though I like it a lot, you know, the articulation's really good. I think the sculpting, the detail on it is really good. I'm just getting tired of it because I have so many figures in my collection based on this body and I like to have a little more diversity in my collection. But the main reason why I chose it was because it's cast in this dark blue plastic and I thought that it would help reduce the uh, amount of paint rub that was noticeable after I painted the figure. Also I think that the frame suits Bullseye really really well. And this Nick Fury shield agent also has a, a white belt and a white thigh strap here with a working holster and white gloves that I think work good for Bullseye. I originally painted the figure all black but then when I put him next to some of my other characters he, he just looked really bland so I decided to dry brush him with a dark blue because in the comic books they use blue to highlight black costumes a lot and it really brings out the sculpted detail and stuff in the costume. I think it looks pretty sharp. I like that a lot. And this figure retains all of his original articulation. Like I said, I'm sure you've seen the Bucky Cap figure before. His arms can go up and down, side to side. He's got a really nice bicep swivel double jointed elbows, wrists that that pivots and swivels. 
He's got a pretty good ab crunch joint. Doesn't go back as far as it goes forward. He's got a little bit of a waist swivel there, but it's hindered by this belt that's glued on kind of at an angle. He's got really nice hip articulation, works really well, and this really ugly thigh cut joint, I don't like that at all. Fortunately on this side you can't see it because of the strap on his thigh. I think that's really cool, I like that a lot. He's got double jointed knees that work really, really well and he's got a uh, boot cuff swivel. Alright, so these are the boots from the original Toy Biz Bullseye figure and I had to mod them so that they would work with this uh, Nick Fury shield agent figure. The, uh, the calves were bigger than the Bullseye figure's calves were and so they overlapped the boots. So what I had to do was sculpt this top band around the top of the boot cuff and to make that a little bit thicker so that the boots would actually overlap the the calf muscles there. While I was at it for extra detail I, I found these uh, little daggers and knife sheaths in my fodder bin. I can't remember what they came from exactly but the knives wouldn't fit in there. I cut the tip of the knife off and the handle part and I glued them into each end of this knife sheath and then glued that onto the side of the boot and then I just repainted everything. So I really like these boots a lot. They have really good articulation. There's that swivel up here at the boot cuff. There's the uh, ankle hinge so you can flex and uh, point the toe. Uh, toe hinge there and also a really nice ankle rocker joint. Better than the original Bucky Cat figure. And these feet have really cool sculpted detail on the bottom there. I think that's really cool. The Nick Fury figure also came with this small pistol. It was cast in silver plastic that was kind of flat looking, so I brushed it with uh, like gunmetal acrylic paint, and it fits in his holster really well. Right, and so this is a Psy that came with the Marvel Select Deadpool. He comes with a lot more weapons than he can actually hold, so um, I loan him out to other figures. Um, when I think of Bullseye, I always think of that famous comic book panel in Daredevil where he stabs Elektra through the chest and lifts her up in the air with her psi. And I like to pose him with this psi weapon. I think it looks really cool. So here's my custom Bullseye figure next to the recent Walgreens exclusive Punisher figure and the most recent Marvel Legends Daredevil figure who also uses Bucky Cap as a base. Here he is next to the Kingpin and Daredevil figures from the Marvel Legends Face-Off 2-pack. Here he is with the old Hasbro Daredevil figure that is really, really petite. I'm glad we got an updated version of Daredevil. And uh, there's the old Toy Biz Electra figure. Um, I don't have the Hasbro Electra. I really would have uh, preferred a comic book style Electra to the Netflix TV series Electra figure that we're getting in the Man-Thing wave. That version of Elektra on the TV series kind of left me cold anyway, but we really, really need a comic book style Elektra figure. This one's really dated. And here's my custom Bullseye figure with my Walgreens exclusive Daredevil in the original yellow costume, and Hawkeye figure from the All-Father wave. I think a lot of people use this version of Hawkeye as their Dark Avengers Hawkeye, which was actually Bullseye masquerading as Hawkeye. And these figures are all using the Bucky Cap Buck body. Right, so I don't think there's any contest between my custom and the old Toy Biz version of Bullseye. I think mine's much, much better. I've seen a couple images of the new official Hasbro version that's uh, in the upcoming Man-Thing wave or Marvel Night's Wave or Netflix Wave, whatever you want to call it. And from the images I've seen, it looks like he's got butterfly joints, but aside from that, I think the articulation is pretty similar to my custom figure. Accessory-wise, he comes with an alternate unmasked head that I would never have used uh, even if I did buy that figure. Um, the only thing that he comes with that I, that I would like to have is the alternate left hand that has the dagger throwing effect. I think that's really cool, but that's not something I 
willing to pay $20 for. I'm not interested in building man thing at all. Now, if I'd known that Hasbro was going to make a bullseye figure, you know, this soon, I wouldn't have bothered making my own custom bullseye. I would have just waited for the official version. But I am still really happy with this custom. Alright, well that wraps things up for me today. I hope you enjoyed this closer look at my custom Marvel Legends bullseye figure. And I wish you luck finding the Man-Thing wave. I read online that it's supposed to start hitting retail shelves on August 1st, so keep an eye out for that. Even though I won't be picking up the new bullseye figure, I still am looking forward to the wave. I'm probably going to pick up the Daredevil, Punisher, and Jessica Jones. I didn't really care for Elektra and the Daredevil Season 2, and I'm not really a big Blade fan, so I don't plan on picking him up unless I can get him real, real cheap. So, anyways... I guess that's it, so take care. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.